Goes nothing. I'm gonna do this completely blindfolded. <laughs> All right, how'd you do? <laughs> Looks like I got uh, Jack of Fables 36 and <laughs> Marvel Team Up, Team Up Spider-Man and Iron Man. Oh, this is gonna be a fucking good one. Hey, keep your fingers crossed for me because, you know, all right, all right. Completely, eyes are closed. I haven't read most of these, I'm sure. And, um, all right. I think I got one. I got one. Yeah, you got one. Okay. Boom. And kind of curious as to what's in this baby one here. Tom hasn't told me. <laughs> so we're just gonna go for random here. Okay, how'd I do? All right. Ah. Uh, oh, sweet. Okay. Fantastic Four number two eighty-seven. Got some dame-looking patrick. Nice. And then Tom Strong. Um, I don't know. Tom Strong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Welcome to a comic book look. My name is John. We got Tom over here to my left, I guess. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we are your weekly comic right. book show. We talk about comic books, anything in the industry. You want it, you got it. Uh, we'll talk about how to get a hold of us at the end of the show, of course. And uh, today uh, we're actually uh, celebrating issue number 15, which is awesome. And uh, it's going to be a very cool episode, I thought. Uh, we're going to bring something a little new. Oh yeah. The show and uh, what do we got? What are we doing? Well, this is a this is going to be a new segment that hopefully we're going to do in the future. We're calling it Comic Book Confidential. Yep. And it is um, where we are just randomly, as you've already seen, grabbing two books out of the out of the stacks of comics of mine, reading them cold, and then now we're going to talk about <laughs> about these legendary lost comics. So. Um, we both grabbed two. You know, what books did you grab here, John? Well, uh, the two that I got were actually just completely off the wall, totally different from each other, which is exactly what we were going for. On deck, we got Mr. Tom Strong, and this is issue number 11. Um, now, this is actually from January of 2001. So, you know, it's it's 2011 over now. Over 10 years to old. To me, it doesn't seem old, you know, but, you know, for some of you younger readers out there, whoa, you know. Uh, so, it was, it's kind of an interesting era, though, um, just kind of the artwork, mm -hmm. the way that the writing was done and so forth. So, for me, I mean, I was kind of taking all that and I'll get more into that later. Uh, Fantastic Four, number 287, however, holy buckets, 19, what, 86? Yeah. Did we say? Whew! Uh, that's more, you know, and I've talked about this before with some of my older uh, Alpha Flight issues and so forth. It's the kind of the let's talk about our feelings kind of writing stuff like that. <laughs> so we'll get more into that as well. Tom, what'd you get? Um, uh, the two books that I picked were uh, Jack of Fables um, 36, which is, uh, you know, from 2009, so not too long ago, um, from September 2009. And my other book is Marvel Team Up. Um, number 145, uh, featuring Spider-Man and Iron Man, and it is um, also from September, uh, except for 1984, and uh, it's on the cover. This is when we used to get word balloons on the cover, mm -hmm. which is cool because you also had one with word balloons on the cover, yep. And um, but it's something they don't do anymore. And this one has says, Hi kids, my name is Bad Backlash. I mean, I'm crazy, and I'm coming to your house. That's what, exactly what it says. Dreadful. That is awesome. <laughs> Dude, that is just so cool. And we got, you know, the, guy. <laughs> the black costume of Spider-Man. So, 
Um, you know, something that we'll, I can't wait to get into. Um, uh, why don't you start it off, John? Definitely. All right. Well, I'm just going to kind of tackle it head first here with Mr. Tom Strong because we got Tom on the set here as well. Yeah. Now, Tom told me that this is one of his favorite series, and my first reaction was, well, is it because the character's name is Tom? And he said, possibly. That makes sense, I mean, to me. So, not knowing anything going into this book, it actually, for being an issue 11, explained things really well on there. Um, basically, we have a visitor hit Earth in the form of a meteorite. It turns out it's actually an alternate version of Tom Strong on there that pops into Earth here. And it's uh, this one, what's called Tom Strange. On this one, yeah. So, there's Tom Strong and Tom Strange. And um, I honestly was like, what in the world is going on? Why is he here and so forth? It turns out that Tom Strange ran across the universe for 30 years to come for help. Um, there was a big robotic monster that took over their Earth and um, came 30 years to find help. When he got to Earth, though, the problem is, is that he's a little fatigued. I don't know about 30 years. I can't even run like five minutes and I'm winded. So, exactly. <laughs> so kudos to you, Tom Strange. You got the metabolism of a god. Exactly. Well, so, who's right? Who's writing it? Then that is the reason uh, that I like it. Ellen Moore. Exactly. It's what I mean. That it's one of his best books. It's, <laughs> it's actually like his take on Doc Savage. Yep. And I mean, I remember that issue. I mean, I love that. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, it. Uh, all in all, like the re it, it's a lot of pages in there. You know, I know that it's nothing different from any of the other books, but each page just had so much going on, a lot of detail, and it, it's simple, but it's not at the same time. Like you really just need to focus and okay, which Tom's talking to who, and you know what's going on here and so forth. All in all, I mean, I haven't really read anything like it. Um, in terms of the content, in terms of what was going on in the book, the characters, and so forth. So um, this is something, you know, if I do draw another one of these down the road from the long box, yes. Or if I ever get done with Tom's pile of homework that I have at <laughs> home, then I might take him up on bar with some surrounding issues. It's definitely not, it's, it's, it's something to check out if you're curious. Um, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, you For like issue 11, you know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, yeah, this is, I mean, it's a sweet book. I mean, it does have a picture of an ad for Lobo on the back. Who doesn't like Lobo? Lol. But, um, yeah, I mean, I like uh, Chris Sprouse's art, how, like, all the guys are, like, so wide-chested, like, extremely. Uh, that's kind of, I mean, I he did some Batman work recently. But, yeah, I, I, that's a great book. All right. And all their covers are always taken after like old comics and, oh, no. or different throwback, different reasons, and that's why there's you know it looks like that. But yeah, it's awesome. That's awesome. You're up. Okay. Well, um, I'll go with my first book that I drew was Jack of Fables number thirty six, which Jack of um, Fables um, is normally written by Matt Sturgis, and uh, this one has a guest writer of Chris Roberson, and I mean he, we, we've seen him before and. Um, he he does I I vampire no excuse me I zombie oh, that's stupid that there's that many but I zombie for vertigo and I mean he has other um, you know titles um, but this um, he's doing Cinderella that's what fa the fables the Cinderella fables which I love um, but the, he doesn't normally write Jack of Fables but he tells a story of Jack um, telling a story to Gary one of the characters. Um, I guess I should give a little background. This is Jack of Fables. Fables is an ongoing series from Vertigo. This was like the side book, um, and it starred Jack, Jack Horner, but it's, you know, Jack of all, all trades. So this is the Jack who was Jack of the Beanstalk, and, you know, all the Jacks throughout all the Fables. They put it into this one character, and he's an asshole, and he's a dick, and he's a womanizer, and it's hilarious, and he's, like, not nice <laughs> to anybody. But um, in this book, I mean, it goes... He talks about, he tells Gary about his time in Africa, and he basically says that every Tarzan story was actually, like, he did that first, and then um, the guy who wrote Tarzan ripped him off in the end. Um, and there's, like, a lot of funny jokes and, you know, sexual into window where it's like, you know, like, he may, ha may or ma may not have had sex with an ape or not. I mean, it sounds like he did. And uh, it, it was a fun story. Um, I loved this book, and I think... Um, Chris Robertson is good, but you know sometimes it's hit or miss. And this, I I remember when this was coming out. I mean, this wasn't too long ago, two thousand nine, two years ago. And I remember when it was coming out, and I wanted them to finish like telling this this giant story that they're telling. Then they cut cut away, and they do this one fill-in issue, and I it it wasn't that good. He 
gets into a chimp in chimp land and you know all these orangutans and stuff are talking to him and they want to go to the farm and I don't know but it it was fun to just draw it out and read the comic I mean that's like part of the fun of having comics you know is you can just do that you can read these things that you haven't read in a while and it's constantly all constantly refresh yourself that's, oh yeah that's the way to do it it's all it's all new to you almost again and it was fun it was fun to revisit um, you know that world because Jack of Fables is done now they ended at issue 50 and it was a great complete run that you know I packed away and I think I I'm I I must have drawn it out of here maybe I don't know um, yeah I'm out of there I guess because yeah I, how I organized my long boxes I figured I would kind of get this I forgot I kept those in here even so <laughs> well it's good you found it huh? yeah exactly <laughs> there we go yeah, all right. right. Next, buddy. Well, we're going to be talking about some Fantastic Four here. This is going to be issue number 287, giving us a shout out from 1986, so a little bit of a time warp here. Um, <clears throat> we have, Tom and I were discussing the writer slash penciler on this issue, John Byrne. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a style that I've been very well acquainted with, I suppose. Like I said, it's the, the let's talk about our feelings and so forth. And when I say that, you know, I basically just mean we're narrating every single thing that's going on <laughs> with our words. Like, there's more bubble than art in some pages. Um, all in all, though, it was kind of a cool issue, actually. <laughs> nice. I, I liked it. Um, I liked the girl power going on in here because the Wasp, um, Sue... And uh, Sue, uh, Invisible Woman, sorry, I call her Sue. I know her on a first name basis. <laughs> um, and then She Hulk actually have a little bit of girl time. Nice! And She Hulk had just joined the Fantastic Four, and there was a remark made, which I thought was interesting, so I definitely want to check out some surrounding issues. But there was a remark made that She Hulk says to Sue, uh, We haven't had a lot of time to talk since I've joined the Fantastic Four. Pause, there's only four of you. How the heck have you not had enough time to join? Have they been fighting nonstop? <laughs> Yeah. What's the deal? So anyways, uh, there was a scene too where uh, She-Hulk jumps into the fight and says it's clobbering time and then Wasp is like, isn't that like copyrighted to the thing or something? And then Sue's like, it just wouldn't be the same without it. So a little bit of, you know, comical dialogue there. You know, it's unfortunate that Ben had to take a break from the group. But, uh, you know, I knew She-Hulk was a part of the group. I never had actually formally read an issue. Nice. So this is definitely a, a good thing to do. Plus, at the end of the issue, we got Doctor Doom back on deck. He evidently was killed. Oh, you even got Doom in the issue. I got Doom in the issue. Pretending to be the Invincible Man. They thought Doom was dead nice. between this battle of... Terex and Silver Surfer or something. Oh, yeah. So God, just a lot cool. going on, but this is and this is the kind of era that I like a little bit too. When things are well executed, there's so much going on in it, but it's not like the Blue Beetle number one <laughs> yeah. where there's a lot going on and it's poorly executed. So yeah. Blue Beetle writers take note. Take note. Yeah, and definitely. It's a good issue. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I don't. I have. It's been a while since I read this run, but I mean, you know, John Burns' run on Fantastic Four is considered, you know. Probably the most quintessential um, run on Fantastic Four may be argued by a lot of the Hickman fans that the current one is. But, I mean, so that's cool that you got to read this because, yeah. you know, the whole overall arching story of Ben leaving and She-Hulk coming on and then Ben coming back, I mean, it's really, really awesome. Yeah. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm glad you got to read that. I mean, yeah, exactly, you're a Marvel junkie. I mean, it puts yeah. you right in that same universe that, you know, you know... And it helps to have that background, but at the same time, another issue definitely explains what's going on really well. So Yeah. yeah. There we go. Well, sweet. Well, my next one is, um, like I said, Marvel Team-Up, Spider-Man and Iron Man. Um, we got Backlash on the cover with um, um, Spider-Man and Iron Man. And we open up, which is cool, the first page is the Last Starfighter <laughs> ad, which, I mean, who doesn't love the Last Starfighter movie? Oh, so I was playing the video, you know, just, you are so good at video games, you must come and save our planet. <laughs> well, I wish that I made me happy. like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. So not that, that made me happy right away, and then I, when I first opened, I didn't really notice that it was not Spider-Man, or Spider-Man wearing the black, and then when I opened it up, you know, it, I mean, this is like some really, the art is pretty rough. Um, we have Tony Isabella's on writer, and Greg LaRoche on um, penciler, and... Um, it is the funniest, most odd story ever. I mean, they make... It's a story about a really depressed Backlash who used to be Whiplash. Oh. 
And this is Whiplash, and he turns into Backlash to try to get that. back. Yeah. And so, I mean, we know Whiplash from the new, you know, Iron Man 2 movie. Um, and it takes place in Cleveland. They go to Cleveland, which is odd. Just and comes to Falls. They go to Cleveland for, like, an engineering convention <laughs> where <laughs> Tony's at. Peter's trying to get a job and meet people, so he's at it. And then Backlash is at it because he's into, you know, the... The, the same kind of thing, and um, I mean, it is just drawn terribly at points, but I mean, it's just the fun 80s drawing, so you knew this was going to happen, but I mean, it is like a depressing story. They talk about how, you know, Backlash has been defeated so many times, he's a manic depressant when he go through counseling, they, and um, you know, he just can't do anything right, there's no way you can take them on. But then he ends up taking them on anyway. He gets to a point where he goes into a bar and they're like, hey, super villain, <laughs> you suck. And then somebody That's pours a beer on his head even. I mean, <laughs> he just gets shit on for like the whole first issue. First, you know, 75% of the issue. You don't even see Iron Man and Spider-Man really. I mean, it's just like all him. And then he finally decides to put the backlash stuff on. And then there's this one point he turns. He's like, I'm going to turn my whip into two Super speed nunchucks! And then, I mean, like, that was, that is so ridiculous, like, <laughs> that he was, that he could How long did they hold up for guts like Spider-Man? Well, then it comes down to, then he, he <laughs> didn't hold up against Spider-Man at all. He, first of all, is trying to get um, Iron Man. Uh -oh. Iron Man ends up not being Iron Man, but Jim Rhodes in costume as oh, Iron Man God. for this convention. Yeah. So it's not even, like, a fully functional suit. And it is, he still has enough to get through it. But then Backlash is like, don't you remember me? And Jim, Jim Rhodes obviously doesn't, who is, you know, War Machine. And so that's like Tony's best friend. He's acting in place of Tony. And Spider-Man is like, oh, good thing he didn't recognize me. And Peter Parker's like, good thing Tony didn't recognize me. Well, it's because it's not Tony. It's Jim Rhodes, like, the whole time. So that's kind of like a funny thing at the end. <laughs> Um, but then it is cool to see in this panel, um, uh, Spider-Man changes his outfit into, for, into the symbiote, and so, you know, that's, you know, before they know it's symbiote, or they call it that, or it has anything to do with Venom, he just has to concentrate on his mind, and somehow his costume changes. Well, you know, they explained obviously to that way more later. But then in the end, you know, um, he loses, he gets um, taken to jail, he was like, call my mom, my mom will help me, and Backlash call does. My mom. And Backlash, his mom doesn't come in, and he's like, just, it ends like with him crying and being a baby and being super depressed, which is just crazy. Mother. It is a funny issue, um, you know, it just, it's, it's, compl it's a complete story, it has nothing to do with what happened, the last issue or the issue before at all. Nothing except that, you know, Spider-Man is in a black suit. And, I mean, it's horrible, but, you know, that's what's so fun about the 80s comics sometimes. And so, you know, comic book confidential, man, I mean... Confidential. It's, it's, a, fun, it's a fun game to play, pull these suckers out. We'll and I pulled it out on the side rack because I'm so bad at organizing. I apologize. You guys probably saw how messy my house is. Well, you know, it's the basement. We're not too worried about it. This is where we shoot the comic books. This is all confidential. <laughs> but, yeah. So, definitely, man. So, speaking of confidential, I didn't tell Tom what I bought this week. So, I was going to re reveal my little stack of real purchases. I had a chance to read all, I think I have six books. I don't even know. All right. Ready? Let's see them. This is going to be a quick gunshot. Here we go. I don't. Right, right, I don't know anything he's good for buying. Apparently, he wants to like impress me or surprise nope. me. All right, all right, all right. So I got Teen Titans number one. Nice DC title. Now this is I believe from last week, but I was yeah. picking up from last week too. So um, I did have a chance. Because to... our comic shop is good and they don't sell out of number one. So you can go the week after, unlike every other comic shop that I've online. That's true. They online, are good at that. Which is shit. This is actually one of two left. Nice. So I lucked out. Great issue overall. You get to meet, you know, Robin, Red Robin, whatever he's calling himself these days. Kid Flash being a cocky prick that ends up messing up a fireman's. Uh, the, he went through the house so fast that he caused a backdraft on the whole house. Went is up it Wally West? Uh, or is it Bart? I think it's know. actually... I. Yeah. It's Bart. Has to be. Oh, maybe not. Because he's like... I don't... Anyways... 
Well, but yeah, I mean, he ends up, it, it doesn't say his name yeah. at all in here. But um, it uh, he ends up, you know, just causing more bad press for metahuman um, teenagers. And uh, Robin gets word of that. You also meet Wonder Girl, who hates being called Wonder Girl, so don't call her that on there. So, all in all, cool issue. I'm actually going to check out number two when that comes out. Um, <clears throat> Tom Knife, something in common, as always. Thunderbolts, number 164. Um, Moonstone being typical, manipulative, forms the American Thunderbolts with vintage costumes, uh, tricks Captain America into thinking that they belong in that time. It's it's pretty cool issue, I think, all in all. You had a chance to read it, too. Uh, how they treated the torch. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Uh, Horrible, yeah. You see the dude all peeled up in the background, and, and there. Zemo's using his arm to flamethrower. And there's like that splash page of the Red School with the big Nazi flag in the background. I mean, it's like crazy. It's, a bold it's Thunderbolts in taking place in the 1940, early 40s in the heat of the war. and mm -hmm. um, It's really, my favorite part is seeing the costumes. Yep. Th Moonstone has this old school costume. So awesome. Uh, Satana, her costume. It's just so, dude, that is like the cutest little devil costume ever. Oh, she's hot. And then um, also like Boomerang's costume yeah. becomes cool, and I don't. Know. So that I think that that's kind of fun. <laughs> but so, yeah, it's yeah, a great it issue, a great of course, issue. like always. Boomerang. Best Marvel comic is still coming out. I'm not gonna go into depth on this next one here because it's X Men Schism number five of five. On that, we're probably gonna be doing a more in depth show later on about that. I assume with the Offspring and books coming up. But all in all, great issue. You know, a lot of cool character development, but we'll get into that next time. No problem. Yep. Uh, I want to read them all before we get into them. I've only read the first issue. So. No problem. Justice League International number two. So I gave it a shot. Uh, you, you haven't read yours yet, so nope. we can uh, hash that out next time. Okay. Too. You got me. No, Red Lantern's number two. And this is why. I told you guys I was not going to get this, but he saved it for me in my box. And I was like, oh, Brian, yeah, I don't. And I told Brian, I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this series. So, you know, I read it, and it was actually almost better than number one was. <laughs> and that's not hard to do. But, you know, it's, it's something where I'm going to give it the 1, 2, 3 policy. So if issue 3 sucks, then I'm definitely out for sure. But last but not least, my favorite series of this week, minus Thunderbolts, was Avengers Academy, uh, number 19, always a good read, great team of youngins, uh, definitely check it out, this is actually a very character, it's very focused on character development, uh, very defining issue is what I meant to say on there, uh, just kind of a lot of, a lot of willingness to sacrifice, stuff like that, so definitely check it out, it's, it's, it's a pretty powerful issue for the series, uh, I thought, so, but that's my shotgun review of my staff. Awesome, dude, yeah, that's a sweet sack, and, Got to, I'm going to have to borrow some of those just to read because I want to catch up on Avengers Academy and X-Men Schism. Cool. But yeah. Cool. What else you got? Nothing, man. I don't got anything else. It's been another great week in, you know, in comics. Um, I haven't really got around to my stack, but it was a fun idea for a fun new show. No, it was a great idea. So guys, let us know if you thought that was fun or if it was completely stupid that, or if you want to, you know, see us do it again. Um, or any other ideas that you have for shows. We're always looking for ideas. We have your emails and questions, so we'll, you know, compile a show about that soon as well. Definitely keep those coming. And, but keep them coming. Keep them coming. A comic book look at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, definitely check us out for sure. Definitely. And uh, Facebook group, uh, comic book look. Um, check us, inveterate media junkies, uh, dot com out for the you know, best comic book talk. And other than that, we'll see you guys next week. Absolutely. Keep it comics.